Okay, I want to address a, a few issues that uh, I intended to bring up in the last message, Rapture Watchers, but I'm going to bring it up here. Now, over the last several months, you know, I've been teaching on faith, holiness, and repentance. I've been teaching a lot about faith. And I've received messages from time to time from folks who, in their mind, they put it in their head that, because I'm teaching on faith that I have a post-trib view. Now, I want to be clear. I do not have a post-trib view. I have a pre-trib view. I believe the rapture 100% because of the scriptures, because of the scriptures, not because of my personal opinions and feelings, but because of the scriptures. I have a pre-trib view. The rapture takes place before the start of the final uh, seven years. Okay, and it's very ingenuine for individuals to come along from time to time and put words on my mouth. You know, it's, it's what's really uh, amusing about it all is these folks will come out of nowhere and in messages that I'm sharing nothing about the timing of the rapture, that they'll start bringing that debate up. And my message had nothing to do with the timing of the rapture. See, there are so many folks who they want to stir these things up. They want to stir debates up. But I want to get into this now. To, on this particular message, I want to get into the timing of the catching away. Now, because I, I, I'll use the word catching away because some folks really don't like the word rapture. They say rapture's not in the Bible. Well, you know, Bible's not in the Bible either. But when we say Bible, we know that we're talking about the scriptures. When we say rapture, we know we're talking about the catching away, which is spoken of in 1 Thessalonians 4.17. So again, that's a very ingenuine thing to say because folks already know exactly what you're speaking of. So, but I'm not going to uh, touch on that too much, but let's go to Luke 17, you know, and, and, and I'm going to be clear where the, where the scriptures clearly tell us and give us that clear picture of the rapture uh, taking place before the start of the, uh, the final seven years. Luke 17 verse 26, when the son of man returns, the world will be like uh, the people were in Noah's day. In those days before the flood, the people enjoyed banquets and parties and weddings right up to the time that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. Now, did you catch that? Right up until the time that Noah entered his ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. See, this was the environment. This was that they were partying right up to the time that Noah entered the ark. Now, folks who say that the, the rapture happens at the second coming. Now, you're telling me at, at the second coming, uh, going through the last three and a half years of the tribulation, which the scripture clearly tells us it's the most trying time, the most, it's a time of tribulation that the planet has ever seen and will ever see again. Okay, so it's the most trying time in the history of the universe. And you're telling me that folks are partying and having banquets and, 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 and uh, 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 giving in marriage right up to the time of the second coming. See, there's something called the Battle of Armageddon that happens too, right before the second coming. Now you're telling me right up, up to, into the very day, it, like Noah into the ark, because the Lord said that he his his coming would be like it was in the days of Noah and Lot. So you're telling me right up until the time of the of the second coming that folks will be enjoying parties and banquets and marrying and giving in marriage. No, see the Lord is describing the event. He's the, describing the event of the rapture. He also spoke of this in Matthew 24. And this is where the Lord says that uh, he would come like a thief in the night. You know, when the tribulation starts, you can start to calculate how many, how many, how many uh, years and how many days it will be before the second coming. It's, it's written in the scriptures. But the rapture now, this is a, an event that we don't know when it's going to happen. Jesus said he will come like a thief in the night. It, it will catch many folks off guard. Okay. Because we don't know the exact day or hour. So it's not the same event. So let me continue reading on here, though. As the world will be, as the world will be, as it will, or excuse me, and the world will be as it was in the days of Lot. People went about their daily business, 
eating and drinking, buying and selling, farming and building until the morning lot left, left Sodom. Now, again, does, is this describing the second coming? Okay, again, the, 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 many folks are, have died off in the tribulation at this point because of sickness and lack of food, disease, war. Now, is this describing the, 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 the condition and time right before the second coming? No, this is describing the time uh, right before uh, the rapture. Okay, before the seven, the final seven years. Let me continue on. The fire and brimstone and sulfur rained down from heaven and destroyed them all. Yes, this is verse 30 now. Yes, it will be business as usual right up until the hour when the Son of Man returns. Again, are you telling me for these post-tribbers who are following this false doctrine? Now, now hear me clear. It's a false doctrine of post-trib. You're telling me that it's going to be business as usual right up until the time of the second coming? No. Now, I want to go ahead and take you back because we want to get a, a clear understanding. So let's go back to Genesis in the time of Lot. The angel in, in, in Genesis 19 verse 22 said something very telling to Lot and his family. He said that you must make haste and depart the city for I can do nothing until you leave. Judgment can't come until you leave. Now, again, you know, the, the judgment uh, was on that particular city, Sodom and Gomorrah, that was on that city. God's wrath and judgment will be up on the entire earth. And judgment can't come until the church is removed. You know, Jesus said in Matthew 16 that, that in life we would face tribulation. In other words, we face trials and tribulations, and we all face trials and tribulations in life. But there's a difference between trials and tribulations in life and going through the wrath of God in the tribulation. And this is what people mix up. Jesus uh, said, uh, said that we are to pray to be accounted uh, worthy to escape all these things that, were, that would come up on the earth. Hello? See, and the, 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 the post-trip doctrine has a lot to do with folks not wanting to, uh, to, uh, to be separated from their family members. They're more in love with their family members than they are Jesus. Uh, they, they, they think that, see, because they know they're, they have family members that are left behind. They don't want to be separated from them. They would rather run in the tribulation and, and try to, 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 uh, to keep alive. They want to run with their family members because they think they can protect them in the tribulation and awaken them in the tribulation. This is their mindset. They don't want to be separated from their loved ones. They are terrified at the thought of their loved ones being left behind. They would rather stay behind with them. And so they embrace, this is, has a lot to do with it. And they embrace this post trib doctrine, which is false. It is a lie from the pit of hell. It is a heresy. As spoken of in Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> Many folks are following heresies today because they are not getting into the scriptures for themselves. Yes, many folks who believe the false uh, who believe the false post-trip doctrine will will send you big articles and long stories and this and that and whatever have you uh, that that backs up their point of view. It's a bunch of talking points. Because the scriptures clearly tell. Now, Genesis, again, 1922, the angel said to Lot, I can do nothing until you depart the city. Again, Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. In the day of Noah, uh, Noah was not on the earth either. Noah was floating above the tribulation and the, and, and, and the uh, judgment. Noah was not on the earth. And that's, that in itself is a picture of us floating above the earth in heaven. And Jesus, again, clearly said, as it was in the days of Noah and Lot. Now, I want to point out that God is not the author of confusion. The enemy is a master at coming in, cherry picking scriptures. I mean, like he did uh, with Jesus in Matthew chapter four to try to deceive him. He did the same thing with Adam in the garden. Matthew chapter four and what, what Satan did also in the garden in Genesis were very similar. He came to the to the woman and said, did God really say? He tries to plant that seed of doubt. It worked with Eve. 
He, he tried to do the same very thing with Jesus. Uh, if you are the son of God, but Jesus didn't fall for that. Jesus stood on the scriptures and said, it's written, it's written, it's written. Now go take a hike. And that's how we handle the enemy. We don't give the enemy place. We don't allow him to plant the seed of doubt in our heart. You know, in first Thessalonians chapter four, it, it talks about the catching away. And as you go into uh first Thessalonians chapter five, it goes in, it goes on to say that we are not appointed unto the wrath of God. Keeping that in context, speaking of the, the, the rapture, the catching away of the church. And then it goes on to, to, to point out that we are not appointed unto the wrath of God. It is very clear in the scriptures that we will not be here. The true followers of Christ. Now, there are many professing uh, uh, Christians, lip service Christians who are rapture only Christians. All they care about is the rapture. They have no faith walk. See, they, they, they see it says in Galatians 3 11 that the just shall live by faith. Now, folks who are living for the rapture and they have rejected their faith walk, they are lip service Christians. Jesus addressed them in Matthew chapter 7. Jesus addressed them and said that, that many would come to me saying, Lord, Lord, in that day, haven't we done all these wonderful things? And Jesus said, I will say unto them, I never knew you depart from me. You who acted wickedly disregarding my commands. You know, from verses 13 through 27 in Matthew chapter seven, Jesus was addressing the professing crowd. He was not addressing the world that he was not addressing heathens out in the world. He was addressing the professing crowd. And he said, many are on the road to destruction. Few are on the road to life. Addressing the professing crowd, this is what he says. He also went on to say, beware of the sheep's, the wolves, excuse me, beware of the wolves in sheep's clothing. You will know them by their fruits. Then he went on to say that many would say to me in that day, Lord, Lord. And then he would turn them away. And then he gives the example of the two builders, both were hearers of the word of God, but one was a hearer only and rejected God's truth. The other was a hearer and a doer. The one who heard the word and rejected it, the Lord said he would liken him unto a foolish man who built his house upon sand, a stupid, foolish man. But the man who heard the words and obeyed them, he said, I will liken him unto a prudent, sensible, wise man. Are we going to heed the scriptures or are we doing this just to follow our favorite little teacher that makes us feel good? That has the great presentations. You know, it, it's it's not good enough to just watch for the rapture and reject the faith. And, and sadly, many rapture watchers are doing that. They have totally rejected their faith walk. You know, many of the post trippers, they're also rejecting the faith. They have pride in themselves. They, 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 they have pride in their faith. They, they have pride in their, 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 their self faith walk. They have faith in themselves. You know, and I said, made a statement in the last message too. I also said, it's sad that many Christians today do not, professing Christians do not know the difference between works of law and good works of the Holy Spirit. See, are we going to be led of the Spirit or not? And this is really what this message is about. Are we going to walk in the spirit or are we going to walk in the flesh? I want to take you to Matthew chapter 10, verse uh, 37 here. Jesus said, if you love your father or mother more than you love me, you are not worthy of being mine. Or if you love your son or daughter more than me, you are not worthy of being mine. See right here again, many who cling to the post trip message they're more concerned about staying with their loved ones, the ones that they love so much, the, to the point of idolatry. They don't want to be taken. They don't want to leave them behind. They would rather stay with them. They don't want to go and be with the Lord. And they don't have faith that the Lord will bring their loved ones over. They don't have faith that their prayers for their loved ones, that the Lord has heard them. So they would rather stay with those who they know who have not given their lives to the Lord. Jesus goes on to say in verse 38, if you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. Hello, if you refuse to take up your cross and follow me, you are not worthy of being mine. Now, this 
Uh, you know, when you look at many of the rapture watchers who who cling to rapture messages, but reject the rest of the truth, reject faith, reject their faith walk. They reject walking in the spirit. They reject falling after Christ. Hello. They 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 reject crucifying the flesh and falling after Christ. Jesus said, you are not worthy of being mine. If you cling to your life, you will lose it. But if you give it up for me, you will find it. Now I want to end the message in uh, 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Oh, and, uh, and, and hear this. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. You know, today is the day to turn to the Lord. Today is the day to long after the Spirit's leading and guiding in our life. You know, if we reject the Holy Spirit's leading, then we'll just have the form of godliness, but not the power. And many have the form, but they're denying the power thereof. They're, de they're denying the power and leading of the very Spirit of Jesus Christ himself, the Holy Spirit of God. They're rejecting the Holy Spirit's conviction, direction, and leading in their life. Today is the day to be genuine. Today is the day to repent. Jesus said in Revelation 3.19, to be zealous and repent. We should have a zeal and passion for repentance. We should have zeal and passion for walking in holiness. We should have zeal and passion for a faith walk in Christ. For we are saved by grace through faith, through faith and not of our own selves. It is the gift of God. Are we going to seek the face of God? The just shall live by faith. Jesus said in Matthew chapter four, that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are we going to submit to God? Are we going to submit to his word? Are we going to submit to his spirit, his truth? James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Well, that's my message tonight. I just pray that the grace and peace and love of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. God bless you and good night.